Hey what's going on guys, Kamagiginzi here, so I've reached the second big milestone in my Q1 emulation in JavaScript and from now on I'm capable of uh, handling the keypad input. Well even though I don't have uh, buttons for a keypad, I can already manipulate uh, the Kim ROM from the console and that's exactly what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video and hopefully by the time of uh, this video Kind of last thing you you will realize why uh, why this is so essential and so important to do it exactly this way because uh, when it comes for instance for Kim Uno the way how the keypad handling is done there is not really accurate and that's the reason why for instance the Kim Venture game doesn't even run uh, well it, it kind of runs on Kim Uno but uh, when you press the key it doesn't react to that and why, why exactly is that happening is going to be explained in this video among, uh, among uh, the rest of things. So here uh, I have a variable called character pendants. If I just copy this variable and paste into into my console, I'm sorry if it's a little bit, a little bit laggy because of my video recording so far, so it's probably I'm doing something horribly wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, uh, so let's set this to to, for instance, so we I want to go to the address 200 hexadecimal and you see like here uh, it's as if I just pressed 2 on the keypad it's, there is no keypad but you just imagine it is there right and now uh, you might be wondering if I try to pr press 0 but nothing happens and why and that's because now currently Kim Ram is thinking that I'm still holding this uh, button 2 uh, still holding it down still pressing so uh, in order to process the next one, I need first to release that button and for that reason I need to give the character pending value of hexadecimal 15. So if I now go again for 0, you see like I managed to input the 0 and now I need to depress it back. And now again 0 and now again depress it back. Alright, so that's how we navigate to the address of 200 hexadecimal. And this is absolutely essential, so having this 15 uh, uh, being fired when uh, you're no longer pressing any buttons because otherwise the Kim Ron would be thinking that you're still kind of pressing that button. And that's absolutely essential. So um, also we can, for instance, go to the addressing modes and the code for that is 11, hexadecimal 11. Uh, so I, I'm now pressing the data button so pressing the data button and now i've just released the data button and now if i try to enter some value for instance i don't know five now you see like i'm entering the data right and holding it like releasing the, this and let's try again okay right and then releasing for instance uh yes and then releasing back and then if i want to go back to the dressing mode and releasing the addressing mode button and now let's say i want to say i want to go to address uh one ff for instance so one uh uh yes then 15 then f then 15 again then f and then again 15 uh, yeah, we have some value there. Yeah, I'm surprised, but anyway, uh, I'm not sure what's the code for uh, for the plus button, but we can actually cheat a little bit. And so here uh, I'm using so all all of this stuff was possible thankfully to Mark Woodka, who has created the Linux terminal based uh, Q1 emulator, uh, which is pretty similar in its implementations and design ideas uh, to the Kimono itself. Uh, so where is I'm just wondering. Uh, where is the plus mm, character minus a bc go single step i'm wondering does it have the plus here somewhere yeah here it is so it should be 12 the, okay so let's try now 12 okay and we press plus and now we need to release it as well so now we release the plus and you see like yeah it's the address of 200 hexadecimal how that has the value 55 which is which is the case we just ent entered it there so it is uh, kind of it has been stored and 
it's kind of sort of a bare minimum proof, proof of concept implementation that uh, that already kind of works so this i don't know i don't know guys uh, about you but for me personally this <laughs> this is a bit of a magic and uh so a bit of a summary at the end of the video so what we can learn from this so Kim Ram on its own is a very fantastic piece of software, I need to say, and it does all the stuff for you. And again, like if we take the implementation by, by Mark, for instance, or by Oscar Vermeulen, who made the Kimuno, what the, what guys do there, uh, they do have, uh, they kind of, um, when they emulate the devices, they kind of given the certain address ranges uh, some sort of names or even a single memory cell might have its own name like uh, PA, uh, PADD which stands for uh, A register in 6530 uh, data direction or PAD which just stands for uh, A register in 6530 uh, data and so on uh, also for handling timers uh, as well uh, so they just uh, they just reference when when it comes to they are tracking reference into the certain memory locations, and they do associate those memory locations with the separate variables in the source code. Uh, well, but I, I just thought that that's a little bit too complicated to to do. So all the variables I have, uh, since we only care about the memory ranges and the specific addresses to be uh, uh, to write the data to and to read the data from. Uh, so um, I only have three variables. Uh, so I have the ROM, then this this little RQ, which could be the part of the it could be just a single 64 kilobytes uh, variable. But in that case, there would be lots of wasted uh, wasted uh, memory addresses. So just to avoid just in order to avoid that, I'm separating them. And also for RAM, I have a, a separate. Uh, a separate array and for both the for for both 6530s i have the single write of uh, 256 bytes to handle uh, the address range from uh, 1700 to 17ff that's pretty much all about it uh, well yeah again like this this could be uh, bulk like into a single uh, in a single memory like the abstract memory uh, array and th that would be working ac exactly the same but again like, just uh, I, I decided to make it like so so you're free to do it however you want basically and bear in mind the fact that we only have three variables it, it uh, uh, significantly simplifies the code for handling those so I don't need to write to this P P A D P A D D P B D P B D D and and other specific locations so I need to I don't need to have the separate variables for them so I can just write to the addresses like 1740 1742 and 1743 and 1741 so those four locations are the most essential for the IO handling for, for the entire IO handling but uh, what is even better that you don't really need to do much there because the ROM does write uh, the proper values to that locations on its own and you don't really need to do anything there because you just let the ROM do all the stuff. That's that's pretty much how it works. And now, um, uh, in regards to how how actually how actually this how actually the key, the key the keypad scanning is working. So, an interesting note to consider that uh, the seven segment. Uh, the six seven segment uh, LED display and the keypad are connected to the same pins. And what happens in in the key one in the original key one? So in the six five thirties chips, uh, I'm not sure which one which one of those six five thirties does this thing exactly, but uh, it just changes the so called data direction. So it might be working like to write data to 17 uh, to 1740 so 1740 is uh, the most one of the most essential addresses uh, so it kind of works in two modes so the first mode it's used for is to output the data to the display and the second mode it's used to is to read the data from the keypad and Kim Ram uh, does swap the uh, this pins like from input to output uh, quite fast so it's not using uh, interrupts. I was thinking it's using interrupts, but actually no. It just uh, it outputs the value, and then it goes and 
uh, like uh, swaps the data direction in six well, in one of the six five thirty chips. Not sure in which one in particular. And then it starts reading uh, uh, like the signals from the keypad. So uh, this is how it works. This is how the logic of reading uh, the data from the keypad works. So it just happens within uh, it happens within the Kim ROM itself that when it writes to the address 1742. So here I'm using Xerox 42 because uh, uh, because of the mapping that 1742 within this write. Uh, so ju just to make the uh, just to make the indexes mentioned properly. So actually, uh, the the absolute the, the here the write 42 is the absolute address of 1742. So just to avoid you getting confused by this. So here uh, we have the data direction didn't it doesn't really contain the data, the data direction I'm sorry I guess just want to quickly reference that just to, to wait uh, to avoid any uh, misleading things so 642 IO register B uh, oh my god I, I forgot <laughs> okay uh, maybe uh, control F 1742 I, I really forgot about this mm. I don't remember what it stands for. Uh, uh, P80, yeah. Oh, maybe I just hold on a second. Control F. Yeah, this is the data in the B. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, six uh, seventeen forty two is SBD, uh, which uh, it, which is the register in the 6530 chip I'm not sure in, in which one in particular but anyway uh yeah it's also the data it's not a uh, yeah it's the data direction but yeah it's not it's actually data well so uh i can't say for sure which one uh oh yeah probably we don't even even care about the data direction yeah so we only care about uh what happens within this sbd at 1742 uh, the reason, guys, the reason why I'm, I'm so I have such a vague understanding about this is because in order to emulate it properly, you don't even need to know that. And that's the reason. It's probably not the best ever thing to to consider. But uh, anyway, so now let's go back. So once that SBD, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't even know <laughs> what this SV stands for, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, SV next value uh, SV returns the correct key bits of the current key depressed uh, belongs to the right scan row otherwise have have made nothing on that row is depressed so yeah uh, yeah I still need to try to figure out what this SV stands for but anyway in order to obtain this SV uh, well it actually well, just just uh, probably there is a better uh, actually, it's sort of a row uh, that we're traversing. Uh, well, at least it seems to be reasonable explanation. So if, let's say I say console.log and this SV variable, save and update. So here is here is what we have. So we have like 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. So uh, if, it, if it is equal to 0, and this means that we're scanning for the first uh, seven, uh, for the first seven or eight, for the first eight buttons. Yeah, just just to give you a bit of more clear uh, idea of how this works, I just want to show you how the keypad is wired on. Um, how the keypad is is wired. It's probably on the hardware manual. And. Where is the keypad? Just keypad or keyboard. Okay. Uh, yeah, I should have, I should have prepared better for this. Okay, guys. Well, we'll now we'll now just find it in a moment. Hold on a sec. Uh, Microprocessor, peripheral, yeah, peripheral devices. Uh, nope. Addressing. Uh, 
Oh, no, no, hold on a sec. It's, uh, it can be found. Yeah, I believe it's, it's better to find this in the user manual. And programs. Yeah, keyboard and display. Here it is. So, yeah, this is what I wanted to show you guys. So we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, actually seven, yeah, seven buttons in the row, and we have three rows. So this this is what this code does. So uh, it, ha it, it, it kind of intercepts uh, the RAM traversing through all of this, all of these rows. And then uh, for every row, so here we have this key bits. Uh, so like uh, the first button, uh, uh, it just uh, so if the first button is pressed in the row, it creates the code BF. Uh, then if this, it creates the code DF. And I'm not really sure 100%, but I know the BF is the seven segment code for a zero. So most likely, I believe the most likely these are um, most likely my, most likely these are the seven segment uh, codes for uh, like from zero to to seven can we actually can we somehow wondering can we somehow check that out um yes we can we can for instance uh so oh, oh, sorry so here if we say df it now should print all the ones. Nope. Nope, it doesn't. Well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, okay. Yeah, just hold on a sec. I just... Yeah, yeah okay, guys. So uh, I think that I just found a way how we can test this. Uh, but first, uh, I just need to turn this the entire CPU off so yeah an update and now it should be shouldn't be laggy really what oh it just didn't save okay okay yeah and now uh, just just to make sure that these these key bits are exactly what I'm thinking about so if we say say SSD one, and this is the the first the first display, and there is a function display digit, display digit, and it accepts uh, it accepts the key code. So if we say zero x bf, it should display zero, which it does. Zero uh, x df should display one. Nope, it displays a. <laughs> this is interesting. Uh, and <laughs> I didn't know that, so yeah, let's try. So what is the EF? And this is nine. Yeah, so probably these are some specific codes. Uh, I don't know in what they mean, to be honest. F seven, A. Yeah, so yeah, doesn't really seem to mean much. F B and F D. Uh, okay, if I just okay, hold on a sec. Zero zero again and uh, df yeah it's still the same zero zero and fe for instance yeah so doesn't seem that these codes no definitely these codes are not the digits <laughs> as i thought so i'm sorry uh yeah these these codes are definitely not the digits in seven segment codes they are not so they are just some random gibberish i don't know why exactly these codes maybe because of uh, i i don't know i have no idea why but anyway um if we do in uh so what uh what we input from um, whatever value this character pending has uh then these key bits are going to be indexed by this by the current by the character pending as as an index so if i say character pending is equal to zero then the key bits indexed by zero bf would be returned and this would mean that uh depending on which row we're currently at uh we press this key or this one or this one 
Then if character pending is gonna be one, then depending on what, what row we currently have, uh, it would be uh, say that this key is pressed, this one or this one. And we just try to make it a little bit closer. Uh, we can even probably see, yeah, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, D, and so on. Yeah, so these are these are the guys. And yeah, so you see like probably yeah, we don't have the SSD switch. It's probably handled somewhere separately. And also we don't have the stop button because that's wired uh, to the non-maskable -mask interrupt pin on the 652 processor. So it's not it's not here as well and we have so how many well anyway so here we have all the uh, all the buttons that uh, all the buttons that are getting traversed by the cam ROM which is which is essential and yeah regarding the code itself so this SV well I'm not sure what the author meant by saying SV but what I see from uh, from logging this value to the console so we do, uh, so if SV is equal to zero, that we are in the row zero, in this row. So from, so character pending uh, less or equals than six. So from zero to six, so from zero to six, which is here. Uh, so in case, if it is so, then we're returning the uh, corresponding key from the key bits. Otherwise we're returning FF, which is uh, assumed by, which is, uh, Kim Ram is expecting for in case if, uh, how he says, if, uh, otherwise FF, meaning that nothing on the row is depressed. So means like uh, the button, I believe is still pressed uh, within the row. I think that's, that's the case. And I guess that's the exact problem that we have in Kimono because it returns FF uh, uh, all of the time. And if, even if it's already been depressed, it should be returning 15, but it doesn't. And that's why Kim Venture game doesn't work there. But anyway, um, so if we are in the row one, so depending if, if the key is pressed, then we just have this uh, key bits indexed by the key been returned so here sv equals to one this row one two this row two so here respectively from seven to thirteen so six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so this guys and for row three from fourteen to twenty and yeah so just uh just gets uh indexed properly so yeah just, just to make sure that we always uh, return one, one, one of these values. And otherwise, if uh, this SV is, is equal to three, uh, uh, that means that Q1 is uh, in the serial mode. But since I don't have that implemented, I'm not sure whether it should be done for this emulator in particular. Well, probably this might be a good idea, but well, we'll see anyway. So yeah. Um, uh, this this is still uh, kind of to be considered on the cards, but any, anyway, uh, for now it just returns zero x f f because we don't have this uh, this uh, serial mode. So yeah, as far as we're not in the serial mode, then by default we should uh, return this f f here as well. I'm not sure what this eighty stands for, so probably uh, needed for Kim Rom as well. So yeah, yeah, really th th thank. Uh, Thank you, thank you, Mark, for creating this Linux uh, Kimono, uh, Kimono emulator. For that. The, the, this is the exact piece of code that, even though it's written in C, but it's exactly what, what I need in my emulator to actually kind of make it work. So, uh, in regards uh, to the future plans, so next uh, I will I will just make this HTML buttons there and. What is even more cool that since in the browser we can listen in, uh, we can listen to the keypad uh, events, so it kind of happens asynchronously from the main loop. Uh, this would really be like very responsive, which is which is cool as well. So for instance, in Kimono, the keypad is getting is getting read once per 100 processor cycles, uh, well, one 100 clock cycles. And here, I think we don't need even 
doing that because we can just uh, fire the on button click event that's pretty much all about it. and not, not exactly on button click but on mouse down would uh, trigger the on mouse down would trigger the character panned into uh, to the certain key code that I was entering manually here and once it's once the mouse up uh, event is kind of triggered then uh, the character panning would would get uh, restored to 15 and hopefully this this is how the original behavior of, of how the original key one keypad is actually working would be imitated here in this simulator so this is it from my side guys thanks for watching uh hopefully the next video i will already present a sort of a or first version to to play around not sure if i if i can call it a bit of the beta version but anyway uh i believe that the next version would already would, would already be available online to play around with so you could have just uh enjoy this skin one user experience like i do so yeah this is it from my side thanks for watching until the next time and take care